In this video, we'll take a look at using DHCP option 150 to perform firmware upgrade on a Cisco 7841 Enterprise phone. Currently, the phone has older Enterprise firmware 12-1-1-12. Next, we're going to take a look at our TFTP server directory. We're going to copy the downloads name for the binaries. We're going to edit the XML default file and we're going to find the specific phone we're going to be doing the firmware upgrade to, 7841. And we're going to go ahead and remove the existing name of the binaries and we're going to paste in the new name which is 14-1-1. Okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at is resetting the phone to factory default. This was a phone I was using for different type of labs, so currently have some static configurations on it. So we're going to go down here to the reset settings option. So this is under admin settings, and we're going to reset all of the phone options. Then I'm going to hit reset. And this, it, this is going to take probably a minute and a half or so for it to reboot and for it to come back into run, into runtime state. Okay, next we're going to take a look at the TFTPD64 application. If you notice, the current directory is pointing to the folder where the 14.1 parentheses 1 firmware is located. And also, this uh, computer happens to be on the same subnet as the phone itself. Okay, the phone actually is pulling down right now the information. So the key file was the XML default.cnf file. That instructed the phone specifically what binaries it needs to actually download. So it basically downloads the .load file. And then within the download file, there's a directory listing or a manifest, if you will, that instructs the specific binaries that the phone needs to ingest. So this technique of using option 150 DHCP does give you quite a bit of potential of scalability because basically the phone's getting the DHCP address. It's also getting the IP address of the TFTP server when it handshakes with the TFTP server, then it's being instructed via the XML file on the TFTP server what specific binaries the respective series of phones, in this case 7841, need to go in and ingest. And then at the end, it's going to actually reboot the phone and the phone will be running the new firmware. So this is definitely a consideration if you have a larger number of phones you want to do in a more rapid fashion. I would recommend starting off with one or two phones in the isolated environment just to make sure this works correctly and then proceeding on and doing larger batches once you establish that it works properly. Okay and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the phone. So the phone um, should be shortly rebooting and uh, generally the firmware upgrade takes about four to five minutes on average. Okay, there it is, ready to upgrade. Device will restart in X amount of seconds. As I mentioned earlier, um, you definitely want to do a test run first with one or two phones to make sure this is working properly and then progressively increase the quantity of phones you're doing in each batch. You definitely want to keep a ceiling, a high watermark, where you feel comfortable if anything goes wrong, you have physically enough folks to be able to go and take a look at the phones, troubleshoot the phones, etc., etc. You don't want to overcommit yourself to such a large batch of phones that if there's any hiccups that it's going to be unreasonable to be able to troubleshoot that quantity of phones. So again, you want to kind of progressively do this one step at a time. 
it typically takes the phone about a minute and a half to two minutes to boot up and go into runtime. So what we'll take a look at here is once the phone is in runtime, we'll take a look at the actual firmware load it has. Okay, we're going to go into settings and down to phone information. And then we're going to go down to the active load and it's 14 1 1, which is exactly what we want to do. And uh, <clears throat> exactly what we want to have, I should say. And you can use the same technique for doing the firmware migration from Enterprise to 3PCC. I have some other videos that cover that because there's also licensing involved in that procedure. And there's also um, hardware compatibility as far as what is eligible firmware migrations. But in any case, this gives you an idea as far as the workflow of using, and by the way, that was the TFTP server that the actual phone got from the DHCP server, if you noticed there a moment ago. Okay, so I'm going to really quickly show you what I did from a DHCP standpoint. I actually did this in a <clears throat> isolated type environment. So I used a small business switch, SG350. Uh, DHCP is very common in a lot of products nowadays. And so this is something that um, you can use a switch, a router, uh, a Windows server, Linux server, there's a lot of different devices that support DHCP. So if you notice, those are the DHCP settings. And then we're going to look at the key thing we're interested in, which is the DHCP option 150. And if you notice, that's telling the phone when the phone boots what is the actual TFTP server. And then there is the actual binding of the phone, the IP address uh, and MAC address, if you will as far as the phone getting leased. Okay, we'll take a quick look at the CLI config of the switch, what it looks like regarding the DHCP server and also the option 150 configuration of it. And we'll notice that we have the IP DHCP server enables the service. I have a name for the actual DHCP pool, low address to high address. DNS, and then we see we have the option 150, and we specify it's 192.168.2.10. And then for description, I just put TFTP underscore server. So fairly straightforward configuration. Um, again, if you have a network device, you'll probably see something very similar if it supports DHCP type of functionality. And then this is going to be our actual folder as far as what we have in the TFTP server. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at the XML file again. This XML file was actually sourced from CUCM 14. So the XML default.cnf.xml. That's a very critical file because that's what actually instructs the phone as far as what it needs to fetch from the TFTP server. So we'll take a look at the file I have used here in this example. Again, this was originally sourced from Cisco Unified Communication Manager 14. And what I'm going to do here in a few moments is I'll, I'll go ahead and scroll from the bottom all the way to the top of the file. And if you don't have access to CUCM, you can actually stop the video and create this file from scratch. So I'll just kind of slowly, progressively go towards the top. But the idea is if you don't have access to CUCM, then you'd be able to generate this from scratch. And the reason this is a critical file is it has the needed instructions depending on which model phone you're trying to update the firmware or migrate the firmware is this is what's going to instruct the phone basically to let it know which loads file it needs to ingest. And once the phone ingests the loads file, then that's going to instruct the specific binaries that the phone needs to actually ingest for the firmware update or the firmware migration to occur. But in any case, um, hopefully this video um, is going to be helpful. Um, again, you know, if you're doing 
larger batches of phones, start small, validate that it works, and don't overcommit on the size of phones you're doing in a single batch. So if anything goes wrong, it's not something that you won't be able to go in and troubleshoot with the staff, physical staff that's on site. In any case, uh, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it helps you. 